it's so much easier when we point the finger at everybody else or we point the finger at the world and we blame other people for being dumb. We blame other people for being ignorant. We fuel a sense of ego and moral righteousness when we just keep looking over there. Do you know what it means when we are constantly pointing the finger at other people? Well, there's three fingers pointing right back at us. Where are we responsible? How are we being inconsiderate? How are we being assholes? A wise man once told me, if it's nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, and you've already found five assholes in the world, chances are you're the asshole, not the other people. Ah, it can get so easy or it can be just too easy to keep our focus outward. We lose perspective. We forget the human condition, both ours and other people's, and that tends to resort to suffering. So in today's video, we are going to learn from the masters of Stoicism and even a little bit from Jesus, how we can reorient our perspective of other people to help ourselves calm down or to help ourselves be more at peace from day to day. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Stars With Me channel. It's all about helping us increase our capacity for resilience and well-being. Today I'm reading from The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. It is July 19th. Forgive them because they don't know. Of course, that's borrowed from the Jesus. Forgive them, they know not what they do. Okay, so I'll start with the quote. As Plato said, Every soul is deprived of truth against its will. The same holds true for justice, self-control, goodwill to others, and every similar virtue. It's essential to constantly keep this in your mind, for it will make you more gentle to all. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.63. Okay, the reading goes on. Brian Holiday's perspective here. As he wound his way up Via Dolorosa to the top of Cavalry Hill, Jesus, or Christus as he would have been known to Seneca and other Roman contemporaries, had suffered immensely. He'd been beaten, flogged, stabbed, forced to bear his own cross, and was set to be crucified on it next to two common criminals. There he watched the soldiers roll dice to see who would get to keep his clothes, listened as the people sneered and taunted him. Whatever your religious inclinations, the words that Jesus spoke next, considering they came as he was subjected to unimaginable human suffering, send chills down your spine. Jesus looked upward and said, simply, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is the same truth that Plato spoke centuries earlier and that Marcus spoke almost two centuries after Jesus. Other Christians must have spoken this truth as they were cruelly executed by the Romans under Marcus's reign. Forgive them, they are deprived of truth. They wouldn't do this if they weren't. Use this knowledge to be gentle and gracious. That's all you got to do. Just go out there and be Jesus. Go out there and be Marcus Aurelius. No problem. As with everything, we want to take these ideas and these principles with a grain of salt. Okay, with a little common human understanding that we're not perfect. These are virtues. These are uh, ideals, as I like to say. And we're just trying to live in alignment with them, move towards them. On a very simple, practical level, as I mentioned before, it can be so easy to point the finger outward and blame everybody else or have righteous indignation. People are so dumb. You hear it all the time on the news. You hear it on commentary channels. People are often tend to be quite judgmental, and they like to point out how their way of seeing things is so much better than other people's. Now, you can do that in a way without being so self-righteous or so ego 
maniacal, you could say. Uh, and, and this reading is just trying to help us shift that perspective, be a little bit more humble in our approach to reality, and spread a little love and understanding. You know, the world could certainly use a bit more of that right now. And in these cases, I often think of, you know, I drive, you got to be hiding under a rock right now if you don't see almost every other driver staring at their phone at a stoplight or driving slowly. People are always distracted looking at their phones. And I often rush to judgment in those situations. Meanwhile, once a drive, depending on how long my drive is, I sure I I am sure I am staring at my phone at some point. And for me, it's probably totally justified. I can look at my phone now because I've rationalized it. Yet, I'll look at all the other people looking at their phones and I'll make some judgment about them and how they're being stupid or how they're being dangerous. Yet, of course, I'm doing the same from time to time. You could think about other people who react in certain ways, people who overreact, people who are really struggling in a moment or are behaving in a way that you really don't like. We just look at the surface behavior and we react to that. We rarely have time to consider, you know what, maybe this person's got a lot more going on in their life than I can see on the surface. And they're acting out of ignorance, they're acting out of anger or unawareness, whatever the case may be. Now, that does not excuse their bad behavior. I think that that idea often gets missed in these situations. It's a lovely idea. Uh, we can separate the bad behavior, okay, or the thing that we're judging people for, and we can still have understanding about it, right? When I see somebody do something that I don't like and that I think is harmful or unhelpful. I can say, wow, that behavior is harmful and unhelpful. They're probably ignorant about it. And I can look at them as a human being who's flawed, who's going to make mistakes, who's going to be stupid. And I can see those things as separate. And I can address the behavior. I can address the person. And I can not get too wrapped up in judging them and being so harsh and critical and impatient. So maybe you can apply that to yourself. So if you find yourself getting caught up in a situation where you're really being judgmental, you're not being gracious, you're not being understanding and patient, see if you can catch that happening. Then, as I've done in many of these videos, get out a piece of paper, something like that, and just write down the line. What is the objective behavior that I'm unhappy about or that I think is unacceptable? Write down the behavior. Other side, maybe what is the um, understanding or the causes and conditions that are leading that people to that behavior? Okay, and that's not justifying the bad behavior, it's not rationalizing it or letting them off the hook per se for bad behavior, but it just simply an understanding a little bit more wise, compassionate, gentle, and gracious, as the reading says. And it it, this isn't really about the other person. This is about us, and we want to be free. We want to, or we want to let go of the tension and the contraction and the unnecessary mind chatter that we're holding on to as a result of our judgment of others. That's what we want to let go of. That's about us being free. It's about our own sanity and well-being and resilience and ability to navigate life's difficult moments. Okay. I hope you found that helpful. My name is Mike Stroh. If you found this helpful, uh, please like the video, comment on it, share it with someone else who you think might find it helpful. Subscribe to this channel, please. And you could even consider supporting us on Patreon. All that being said, I wish you all the best. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.